Honourable Nanaima. Great call. Mr. Great Speaker, call. if those two speeches were uh, an exemplar, an exemplar of the government's promotion of its eighth budget, it's no wonder that out in the provinces, not a peep, not a sound, not a murmur of what the government is trying to promote here today in the House. Do you know what? It's as simple as this: the government's budget has got its priorities in the wrong place. It doesn't reflect the type of concerns that everyday New Zealanders have. They want a warm, healthy home. They don't want homeless on the street. They want a reliable public health care system where DHBs aren't crammed to the hilt in the A&E room. They want to ensure that every kid has access to a decent public education where we're not relying on philanthropic trusts to feed our kids at school. We have a school system that works for them and a school system that cares about them. Mr Speaker, they're thinking about jobs. And out in the provinces, and I heard the contributions of members on the Treasury benches talking about this budget being good for the regions. They want jobs out in the regions, but there is a more unstable work environment for many people who are earning up to the minimum wage, up to the minimum wage, and they can't rely on the jobs that they do have out in the regions. It's a very precarious state, Mr Speaker. The government has got its priorities in the wrong order because people out in our communities, in the provinces, actually in Auckland, are worried about the housing crisis that is there, but also out in our regions as well. I want to come in particular to the lack of a strategy for Māori opportunity. Hear, hear. Because the Māori Party have simply uh, raised their hands and said hallelujah to all the baubles of what they've been able to achieve, but it's as simple as this. The government is getting more revenue in tobacco tax than what the Māori Party has been able to return in the initiatives that they That's are putting right. out there. So let's go right. through them. This is an example of putting the cart before the horse. The Minister of Māori Affairs has promoted the Māori Land Service and what? Uh, my colleague Mika Whaitiri, who's promoting uh, uh, the, the, the concerns of people around the Tūre Whenua Māori reforms, he's, he's providing $18 million over three years to the Māori Land Service. Heck, the legislation hasn't even <laughs> passed through the House, putting the cart before the horse without listening to the concerns of people in their communities about the type of land reform which may inhibit simple owners on their own land from having a say. Right. Now, how can that be? And then, yes, Te Matatini, our huge cultural event, is receiving a small increase. Comparatively, when you look at the numbers going to regional kapahaka and then the national kapahaka <coughs> event, <coughs> around about 250,000 people is estimated, more than the, than the uh, I'm told, more, more than the 71,000 odd people that go to the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra, but a huge inequity in distribution. Housing initiatives, around about 17.2 million set aside for housing initiatives, 12.9 uh, million of which is for the Māori Housing Network. But I can, I, I can confidently say that the needs in the Māori housing space will outweigh the meagre apportioning of budget in this area. So, you know, we can uh, acknowledge that, yes, some gain has been made there, but actually, is it enough and does the st strategy meet the real need uh, in our community who face high uh, needs in terms of housing provision, high needs in terms of health care, high needs in terms of good, reliable, uh, quality education. No, the budget doesn't address that at all. And in fact, it's laughable what Minister Bennett did when she said, well, we'll give a $5,000 <laughs> grant for people to get out of Auckland for free and go to places like Huntley. Well, I was brought up in Huntley. And I can tell you now, there are no homes in Huntley. That $5,000 will go straight to the pocket of private landlords who will be That's reaping right. all the rewards from these people who are being turfed out of Auckland. Make and so, and, and how Make can that be? Right. The government sells uh, state houses, the government refuses uh, to ensure that there are more affordable homes to buy in, some, in, in many of our regions and in regions under pressure, and the government ignores that homelessness exists. How can that be? Where we have the government promoting its economic performance at the expense of greater inequality and greater poverty in our society. It can't be, can it?
Well, it is. So next year, when the government brings out the policy, and people should know now, the reason why no one's talking about this budget is because next year the government's probably going to give tax cuts, and that'll be the election sweetener. Well, it, it can't be at the expense, I believe, of people who need the support now. That's right. It can't be at the expense of people who need the support now. In housing, we see some very significant pressures. So let me paint a picture just across my own electorate, which I'm sure uh, re reflects many other electorates. In Huntley, there are no homes. In fact, you'll be waiting for a long time to get assessed. Um, even from private landlords to be eligible to go into the private rental market there, it's a problem. In Pukekohe, you only need to visit King's seat to see what people are reduced to if, one, they can't be assessed, uh, there are no homes on the Housing New Zealand list, and two, uh, private landlords won't have them. And so they go to whatever is available, and I challenge any government minister to go into King's seat and, and see the conditions that people are forced to go to when the government doesn't take some leadership role in this space. Papakura. Well, we've seen uh, the refurbishment of a fire station for temporary accommodation, but I can tell you temporary in, at, at that particular dwelling is up to two years because the government isn't taking its rightful leadership role in providing good, rely, good state housing. Thames and Pyrrhus is the same. People are moving out of the city. They're moving back to where they think they can get more support around their whānau and things like that. They are moving into their whānau's sheds or their sitting rooms because, again, there are no homes. There's no adequate support for them. And how can that be? In Hamilton, it's just as bad. We, if we have any issue coming through our electorate office, it's for housing. That's right. And the issues around housing means simply this, and this is how it impacts on education. We have had a family who, who came to us, and, and they had been in three different homes. So that meant their child had to go to three different schools. And their learning, their learning opportunities were set back simply by the transient nature of their living experience. And in a caring, decent society, we should say, no, this is not acceptable because in a, in a society like ours in New Zealand, education is the doorway to opportunity. So a secure housing environment, a stable, warm home will give all our kids the best opportunity and the government members should not look down. They should look up and they should look forward and they should meet the challenge of kids who are now forced to live in cars and we've heard numerous stories uh, of those uh, up in Auckland. Mr Speaker, the government talks about uh, DHB funding but for the Waikato District Health Board it's flatlined. And I can tell you, if you go to the, uh, to, the, to the hospital in Hamilton, you will see good staff under pressure working in the A&E uh, unit with waiting times up to eight hours. If you go to a private A&E in Hamilton City, they're waiting up to two hours to see a doctor. This is, this is the challenge of a public uh, health system that is not adequately funded, and then the impacts in, the, in other parts of the community. The Ops funding grants uh, have not increased significantly. Teachers are bearing the pressure of more and more responsibility for outside of the school gate needs. And that means they're taking from their pocket to try and ensure that their kids get the very best opportunity. So we are putting, the government is putting pressure on teachers and principals who want all kids to have a good opportunity. Ops funding means that schools will be more reliant on parents to give, but what about the parents who can't give? And what's going to be the opportunity for them? Oh, a charter school. Yeah. A charter school. Give more funding to a charter school than a public health school. What message is that sending to kids in New Zealand? This budget has got its priorities in the wrong place. Doesn't provide for people who want a good home, a reliable job, uh, a good access to education for their kids, not transient opportunities, and a good public health care system that they can rely on. More so, the Māori Party has no strategy uh, in terms of Māori development. In cases, they're putting the cart before the horse. It's not addressing the fundamental need of regional development that provides jobs in partnership uh, with iwi. Uh, it's a bit of a mess. I'm happy to speak to this particular budget because I think in 2000 and uh, 2017 it'll be all on.
all on. Sing it.